Brad, appreciate you making some time for us this morning. I know you've probably been strapped for it with everything going on with the Texas and Oklahoma athletic departments. First and foremost, what has been the response from your listeners and Texas fans when hearing this news? Well, first of all, guys, thanks for having me on. And uh, what an off season it's been for, for us in the industry, right? I mean, this is supposed to be a, a slow time as we kind of end conference media days and lead up to the start of the season. But with NIL dropping and now with this news, it's been uh, pretty easy to uh, be a sports radio host, especially <laughs> in our parts of the world. But no, the, uh, the, the initial reaction for Texas fans, I think, was shock. I think this news caught everybody by surprise, right? Brent Swordman's report was last Wednesday, and I don't really know anybody who saw this thing coming. So the initial reaction was shock, but uh, for the most part, Longhorn fans uh, are excited about this news, and they've embraced the possibility of joining what has been the premier conference, not only in college football, but in college sports for the last few years. So, yeah, that shock turned to excitement pretty quick, and uh, I think Texas fans are, are ready to take this thing head on. Brad, I was reading Bob Stutz's op-ed in the Oklahoman, and he talks about OU's move to SEC is what's best for Oklahoma. Also kind of slighted OSU a little bit. Do you think this move to the SEC potentially and probably is the best move for the Texas Longhorns and the Oklahoma Sooners? I think so. You know, it's not the most ideal fit in terms of personality. Like I, I've never viewed Texas as an SEC type of school. And, you know, there, there are some things that are different in the SEC versus what Texas has stood for as an athletic department over the last, you know, few years. But, man, the SEC has just been so dominant. And to me, it feels like the highest ceiling is for Texas to join the SEC from a financial perspective, from a business perspective. And it also feels like the highest floor is also joining the SEC because it feels like that conference is absolutely rolling right now. And just some of the money that we've seen thrown around regarding TV deals and other endorsements that could come from this 16-team SEC with Texas and Oklahoma involved, that feels like too good of an opportunity to pass it up. You know, fans will sometimes forget that uh, college sports is a business and a big part of business is making money. And from that perspective... Yeah, I think this puts Texas and Oklahoma in a really, really good spot moving forward. So, you know, the Big Ten maybe would have been a fit. I know a lot of Texas fans thought that would be the move. Heck, a decade ago, it felt like the Pac-12 was a foregone conclusion for Texas, but we know what the Pac-12 has become. Uh, I think there are questions regarding the Big Ten's leadership after the way they handled COVID and how they delayed the start of the college football season last year. So it just felt like in the ACC, too, as a, a very – questionable television deal so it felt like every other conference that texas and oklahoma could have joined had some sort of question going on with it but uh, the sec has been absolutely rolling so it feels like the safest pick but also the pick that uh, has the highest ceiling too in your opinion what is the, the the true timeline we've heard a lot of people you know conjecture that they thought you know a, a year from now this this move would be consummated i look at the the current tv deals and cbs being in the middle of this and I'm trying to figure out how the path could could be sped up. Um, you know, what, what's your true feeling? Will it truly be 2025, or do you think there is a a path that could be cleared for OU and Texas to be members of full fledged members of the SEC sooner? No, I think there's a zero percent chance we wait until 2025 for this to happen. Uh, honestly, I think 2022 is the most likely scenario, and okay. 2023 would be the latest. How do you see that one happen? Yeah. Yeah, so what what would expedite that, guys, is I'm calling them the irate eight, uh, the remaining eight Big 12 institutions who are pretty ticked off with Texas and Oklahoma's announcement. If they if they can find homes relatively quickly, and I know the Big 12 has come out and said, like, we hope to you know keep these eight schools and find a way to keep this conference alive for a long time. Uh, I'd be pretty surprised if that happened. And I think the other eight institutions of the Big 12 are doing whatever they can to find a, a, a landing spot, whether it's in a power conference, preferably for them, or just any conference in general, because it feels like the writing is on the wall for the, uh, for the Big 12 to kind of dissipate. So if the other eight schools can find homes and they can make announcements relatively quickly that, hey, they're headed elsewhere, then there's going to be no point in the Big 12 staying around. And there's this exit fee that uh, a lot of people are talking about, right? It's $70 million where Texas and Oklahoma could pay that fee and they could get out of the Big 12 sooner than 2025. 
uh, Texas and Oklahoma have the ability to pay that. And also, ESPN still owes Texas about $150 million for the Longhorn Network, everyone's favorite television <laughs> channel out there. I'm sure you guys love it uh, in Arkansas. But there's, there's a belief that you know, ESPN could just pay that money off. Like That could be how Texas and Oklahoma get their buyout out of the Big 12 sooner so they don't have to wait for 2025. So I think it's better for all, all parties involved if this thing happens before then. And once again, guys, like I, I wouldn't be shocked at all if this is Texas and Oklahoma's final year in the Big 12 Conference. So if the current television deals stay in place in the SEC and, the, and CBS has a, a very favorable deal in, in their favor that's like $55 million a year that, that goes a few more seasons, and the SEC's deal with ESPN doesn't kick in for a few more years, you believe that the current 14 members are willing to take a smaller slice of the existing pie to welcome them in sooner? Man, I, I think there's a way that any any of those contracts can get broken. I really do. I mean, there's just so much money involved in college sports, and, and I think there's a way to kind of break those up and find a way to bring in a new contract that pays every member institution of the SEC more money from day one. Uh, if that doesn't happen, I would like to think that the you know the potential long term benefit and heck, it, it doesn't have to be long term, right? We're talking two, three years down the road. But mm-hmm. how much that affects every member institution until the end of time is worth maybe taking a smaller slice of the pie for a yeah. couple of years. But once again, I, I think there's a way, guys. These contracts can be shedded, and there's a way uh, all of these member institutions can can cash in before waiting until 2025 or whatever. See, I, I'm with you. I, I don't think it will be. You know, obviously, it's not going to be this year. I don't think it will be 2025, but you know, the, the further you get down the road with CBS, the, the easier they are to buy out, perhaps, on their deal and uh, maybe two years from now that, that they could put this together. And plus, if you go to a nine-game schedule in the SEC, and many feel like that's the chip the SEC will have to play to get the TV money to where they need it to be, you've got 14 current members that are going to, to have to buy out and pay the fee to get rid of some non-conference games to make room on the schedules for that. So there's some maneuvering in football schedules, I assume, that will have to happen to make that ninth game a, a reality because I, f- I feel like that's the, the the ace up the sleeve that's going to have to be played to get the revenues to where they need to be. No doubt. Yeah, there are some hoops to jump through without question. And Texas actually has a number of SC teams scheduled in the non-con over the next decade. Obviously, Texas playing Arkansas this year, but the Longhorns have a home-and-home with Alabama in 22 and 23. They've got home-and-home set up with Florida and Georgia within the next decade as well. So it'll be interesting to see how those things uh, play out over the next few years. But yeah, uh, there are hoops to jump through, but I think uh, people are going to be happy to jump through those hoops. And look, just from a college football fan perspective like it scares me a little bit as a texas grad and a texas fan to have to play you know a nine game conference schedule in the best conference in college sports but man every sec game is going to feel like must see television i'm sure it already feels that way to y'all but i mean you throw texas and oklahoma into the mix with some of the huge brands and success that the sec has had over the years uh, that's going to be really, really fun to uh, to cover this and also to be a fan of any team in this league because it's going to be a war year in and year out. Brad, you just said you're a graduate of the University of Texas and a Texas fan, and yet you just made what I thought was a pretty reasonable take with your football program because I, I have friends <laughs> that, go, that went to Texas. My cousin is a senior at Texas, and I, I just feel like there's such an arrogance that comes out of the fan base. From your perspective, do you feel like that Texas can live up – to football expectations entering not just the toughest league, but potentially the toughest division in college football? Yeah, that's the big question, right? I mean, I I feel great about Texas and every other sport. Uh, The Longhorns are coming off arguably their best athletics year in school history. Three national championships, a runner-up finish as well. Uh, Texas just won the Director's Cup, which I didn't even know was a thing. Stanford apparently has won this award every year since 1995, and it's given out to the best athletic department in the country for that school year, and Texas won that thing. So in every other sport, I think Texas fans are pretty confident that they can hang in the SEC. Football, obviously, the big question. Mm-hmm. And, man, uh, for Steve Sarkeesian, his, ju- his job just got a little bit tougher. Because let's be honest, guys, I mean, Texas has only won the Big 12 three times in 25 years. Yep. And there's no doubt the SEC is a better conference than the Big 12. So just on paper, looking at that, it's like, 
well, how do you expect to win the SEC more when you can only win the Big 12 three times in two and a half decades? There's some concern there. And look, there's no doubt, guys, if Texas plays the way it's played the last decade, they're going to really struggle in the SEC. They're going to be middle of the pack, if not on, on the back end uh, of what's going on in the SEC, considering how good that conference has been. So, yeah, that's the big question. Uh, I think a lot of Longhorn fans are confident. Look, there is some arrogance to this fan base. I, I won't deny that. So there, are, there is uh, some Whoa. over-optimism going on with this program compared to what probably should be happening based on what we've seen on the field for the last 10 years. But that will be the biggest question for sure. And, man, I mean, the, once again, the job for Sark just got tougher, especially if Texas is going to join the SEC in 2022. Uh, this is a big year for Sark to create some momentum, to create some buzz for the Longhorns as, uh, as they enter what has been the best conference in the sport. Brad, the last question is we let you go. If you can do it in about 30 seconds, your opinion on Horns Down. My opinion on Horns Down, man, that's, that should be 15 yards for the Texas Arkansas game. Oh, just for you're you guys doing so well. Me. You're doing so well. Oh. No, I'm kidding, guys. No, it, it doesn't bother me at all. I actually love it. Look, it's it, it's kind of free branding in a sense. Like, you'll see Oklahoma and Texas A&M fans, like, buy Longhorn stickers and flip them upside down on their car. And it's like, you guys realize by buying that, you're supporting the University of Texas, right? <laughs> I always get kind of confused out of that. But, uh-huh. no, look, I, I think horns down. I think stuff like that makes college sports great. Like, I, I hate that we don't embrace rivalries. And I hate that we don't embrace the stuff that makes college sports great. I, I think that type of stuff is awesome. And, uh, yeah, it shouldn't be a penalty at all. Uh, and hopefully that's not uh, an issue that we have to talk about at SEC Media Days moving forward. Because at Big 12 Media Days, somebody asks the question every year, uh, hopefully we don't have to worry about that moving forward. Or Monday following the Arkansas-Texas game this fall. Brad, we appreciate your time this morning, man. Enjoy these next couple weeks, and hopefully you can get a break off before this football season. Y'all too. Thanks for the time, fellas. Good stuff from Brad Kellner again, who does sports radio for the Horn down there in Austin, Texas.